How do you apologize for blaming someone for something a monkey did? Welcome to Ranger Reviews, the web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 15th episode of the show Power Rangers Turbo, as well as the 220th episode overall titled Cars Attacks. We begin this episode at the Youth Center, where at night a girl in black is dancing to some music. Cat shows up creepily watching this girl dance. Cat, how many times have you watched someone do sports at night at the Youth Center? The girl sees her turning off the music and packing her stuff up. Cat asks a question, the girl gives her a look up and down, leaving. Cat acts offended, but like, Cat, you were the creepy one. As the girl is leaving, she passes Stone, who calls her Jenny. Cat asks who she is, and it's Stone's niece. Apparently, his sister has had problems with her, so Jenny got sent to him for the summer. Stone says that he hopes that she just needs to adjust to living in a new place. At a dance audition, Tanya and Cat are there, and Tanya says how Cat is going to do great. Cat is really intimidated, though, and she wants to get into the Royal Academy, which is apparently what this audition is about. We cut to Cat's audition, which is a ballet number. The other girls are there watching, and Tanya is in the crowd for moral support. The judges nod to her. The judges ask for a girl named Jenny Hunter, and that girl shows up, explaining that she got lost. They tell her that she has 30 seconds to start dancing. She then puts on a hip-hop song, doing her routine from earlier, much to the wonderment of the other girls in the crowd, who are clearly hardcore judging her. Tanya says that she's amazing, which is like a bit much. Then Kat waves to her, and she ignores Kat, which makes Tanya say, You're right about that attitude, too. Mm-hmm, Tanya. People then get final auditions for later in that day, including Kat and Jenny, who everyone stares at. Out of an apple juice bottle, here comes that damn periscope, and apparently, Elgar is drinking juice via the periscope. Ha! <laughs> I love him. Deotox then gives Porto some instructions, but we cut to Stone before we hear them. Stone is mad because he can't get the books to balance, and he throws a piece of paper, making Bulk and Skull realize that they should do something to prove that they're humans. Outside of the audition, Tanya and Kat get jumped by Piranatrons and Elgar, which turns into a pretty okay fight between the two girls and the Piranatrons, while Elgar leaves to go inside. And Elgar is in the audition room, and a bubble with Porto shows up. He explains to Elgar that he has a cassette player bomb that he needs to switch out with the real thing so that once it hits 100, it'll blow the place up. The Blue Centurion shows up outside, helping out Cat and Tanya against the Piranatrons, who they're now pretty easily defeating. They retreat, leaving the three alone. Blue Centurion says he was just doing his duty. At the youth center, Stone gives Tommy and Adam empty cups, and they ask what's going on with him. Stone mentions how his entire week of receipts and money are missing, and he blames himself for being stupid because he used to be a cop. Tommy then suggests that Emily might have put it somewhere, and wow, I totally forgot about that girl. Apparently she's back east visiting her grandmother, which leaves him to realize that the only other person who actually knows where the keys to the safe are is Jenny, who has just walked in. Stone asks her if she borrowed money from the safe, and Jenny's obviously offended, saying she didn't take any money, getting mad and leaving. Kat and Tanya show up, joining Tommy and Adam, telling them about how she did at the final audition. They also tell them about the attack in Blue Centurion. They realize Deotox probably planted a bomb, so they'll go to the power chamber to get the turbo navigators to see if they can figure it out. Deotox says that they're leaving, and she's mad they're going to ruin her plans. Then a doorbell rings on the ship, and Wolfgang Amadeus Griller, our new monster, who is a music conductor, shows up. Yeah, that's a pretty good monster name. He says that his music can make anything come to life, and Elgar tries to tell him to read the sign that says no solicitors, but it says no smoking. I love Elgar. Deotox says that she has a job for Wolfgang. At the power chamber, all the rangers are together and the turbo navigators are charged. They're about to head out when the alarms go off, showing on the viewing globe that Wolfgang has made a ring around the earth with cars. Although, this would make the cars, like, not be the right size, because they're the size of freaking countries. Tanya asks when Alpha started watching music videos, because she's an idiot. They need to handle this dude. Shift in the turbo. The rangers show up in town and the cars are flying toward them, causing a ton of explosions as they land onto the ground. Then they start to crush down on the rangers. We see that final auditions are currently taking place for the Royal Academy, and the bomb is up to 51. Wolfgang then is face to face with the rangers, and Tommy calls out their weapons on the turbo ram, and Wolfgang comes forth only to get blasted back by Justin and Adam. They make the turbo ram cannon, firing at Wolfgang, hitting him and making the floating cars disappear. Deotox fires the torpedoes, but uh, there's no torpedoes. Oh my god, Elgar is actually shining the torpedoes in the ship. She sends Elgar and Rygog down to help Wolfgang. Also, the bomb's at 81. The Rangers are still fighting Wolfgang, and then Piranatrons, Rygog, and Elgar show up to help him, and they start firing at the Rangers, hitting them back. The Rangers each do little cool clusters of fights, and Wolfgang plans to make them pay when the Blue Centurion shows up, saying that he's playing loud music without a permit. I kind of like Blue Centurion a lot. He and Tommy take out their blasters, firing at Wolfgang, blowing that dude up into nothingness, which makes Elgar and the Piranatrons just jump back. Rygog and gang then retreat. Blue Centurion leaves, and the Rangers talk about how they have to get to the rehearsal hall because there's a bomb there. At the audition, Jenny is doing her dance when the Power Rangers come in, panicking because of the bomb. 
They figure out what it is and Kat gets the bomb running outside and tossing it up into the air exploding. Then Jenny is mad because she didn't die, I guess, leaving all pissed. Then Kat comes in unmorphed and she's next to Dan, so she gets ready. I mean, I feel like that's a pretty traumatic instance that they could probably give Jenny another shot. After her dance, Jenny and Kat are being spoken to by the judges. He tells Jenny that she's awesome, but she also needs to really work on her attitude because it makes her untrainable and she can try out again next year. He then tells Catherine that she's been invited to join the Royal Academy for the fall semester. Kat is stoked and she says thank you, walking out to find a depressed Jenny on the bench outside. She walks over and Jenny asks if this is where they have a cozy heart-to-heart -heart talk and we make it all great and become best friends. Wow, this is really meta. Then Kat shocks us all by saying, look Jenny, I don't even know if I want to be your friend. Jesus, Kat, for someone who's been toting about making friends with everyone to Justin a few episodes ago, this is kind of harsh. She then lists out all the reasons of why Jenny sucks, which starts to feel a little cruel. You're mean, you're rude, and you alienate yourself from everyone. Jenny then explains how her mom sent her away and how her uncle is accusing her of stealing, etc, etc. Kat tells her to take all the friends that she can get, but don't blow it. She can meet up with them at the juice bar later if she wants. Then all five rangers are there and Stone brings her a gift as a thank you and Kat is apparently going to London to study dance. Tanya says she can't give up this opportunity and Kat brings up that Tanya gave up singing to be a ranger, which is an impressive callback. Then Jenny shows up, but so do the monkeys, who have all the money in the receipts. Stone sees this and he goes over to Jenny apologizing. Jenny actually understands because she said she'd blame herself too, and she hugs Stone, smiling at Kat. The end. Wait, so they aren't friends? I don't know. This episode's actually really good. I think this is the most realistic portrayal of someone sucking to be around on Power Rangers. I mean, this girl even calls out the typical trope of Power Rangers about how they're going to be best friends forever now, and Kat shuts it down, saying that she wouldn't even want to be her friend at this point. That's uncomfortably realistic, actually, and pretty direct. But in the end, they use the necessary Japanese footage for the episode, but most of that fight was original footage, mostly because it's from a very early Car Ranger episode before Blue Centurion even showed up. Overall, I think this episode was just awesome. Again, you'd be led to believe that Jenny would be a very important character later on in the show, but, well, you'd actually be wrong there, but we'll get there. So next time brings us to what was the mid-season finale of this show. But until then, may the power protect you.